Oh, hi. It's almost Alex Norman here. I was just taking a, a quick hike up in the hills here and I actually really didn't want to do a video today, but I, can, I guess if there's a camera guy, I, why don't we just do a video on how to get amazing B-roll uh, when you're out on your next hike and, and how to create an amazing quick, short, bite-sized travel video when you're out there hiking. Okay, tip number one is include the first person. A first person perspective is going to take the viewer with you. It's gonna make them feel like, in a way, they are you and they are going on the hike themselves. Um, I feel like if you're just doing everything purely observational, you're gonna miss out on that aspect of, of the journey and of actually kind of going on the hike itself. So what we're gonna make sure we do, for example, in a first person shot, is get a couple of shots of the feet walking. I like this through the kind of the shadows and the shade, it looks really cool. Um, once you've got that shot, you could also potentially include like a, a zoomed shot, kind of like we do with the establishing and the, um, the other types of shots where we, we get an establishing one and then we punch in to get closer. Um, this is on 50 frames per second as well, so I can slow this down at 50%. Always looks nice with those feet moving through shots. Uh, another example of a first person ones, these ones are kind of hit or miss. They can work very well or they can look kind of cheesy or stupid. I quite like to try and film my hand in places. The, the typical one with this that is probably uh, infamous right now is the kind of like playing with the sun. It's, I'll show you quickly. Uh, it's kind of this, this kind of thing and then you slow it down. It looks kind of cool. To be honest, it still works in videos, but it is, I don't know, I'm kind of over it now. Each one to their own. This is, is kind of like a, when I, when I sometimes film nature and I film like textures on trees and things like that, like, like this for example, and I'm kind of getting these texture style shots, I almost want people to have the feeling of like touching it. So sometimes what I will do is kind of put my hand there and maybe even just scrape down. I mean, it probably looks ridiculous to you guys what I'm doing right now, but if you actually put this in a video in the right place, it can look pretty cool and it can look like you are really connecting with the nature. Tip number two matches with tip number one better than a Pinot Grigio pairs with a Wellington beefsteak. It's all about the journey. Now, when I say it's all about the journey, I mean you're not just including when you arrive at the top of the hike and it's like, oh, great. What it's more about is the build-up. It's about potentially even leaving the home, putting the boots on, and then walking up. And not only that, it's about the point of the hike where you're like, where you're dead and the last thing you want to do is record yourself sweating or you don't have to necessarily do that but it's getting those moments where you're kind of in the journey you're transitioning from one point to the other okay so for these journey style shots what i quite like to do sometimes is put this on uh, like vlogging mode so tilt the screen up see what you're see what you're shooting and then if you are for example just tired or whatever you can kind of just like express that in the camera um, you don't have to do this i like i i like the, the fact that a lot of people don't wouldn't include themselves in the video um, but like, I think if, if you're willing to do it, it definitely adds something of kind of like, maybe just a couple of shots of your, literally you. Because you're kind of showing what you see the whole time, but you're not showing your reaction to it. So it can be nice. So for example, if you, if you film a good landscape view, have a couple of shots of you looking at it, looking around, and also a couple of shots if you're tired and you're kind of, you're, you're hiking up or whatever, kind of filming, you looking around, a bit out of breath. It definitely adds something to the video. It's best to do it authentically. Like, don't just go on a run and be like, okay, let's get the out of breath shot. <laughs> Another cool way to do this is to capture your shadow. Um, it's a really cool way. It's kind of a mix between the journey and the first person stuff is to get a couple of shadow shots. Today, we've got a nice sun behind me. So just walking like that. Slow motion works pretty well here as well, just filming a shadow. And the other way is to get some shots as if they're from your perspective, but they are actually smooth and more well planned out. So this is kind of like the journey as well. It's almost as if like we're, we're, we're moving left to right here, as if we're kind of looking this way and hiking this way. And we're gonna film each shot as if it's kind of on the journey. We're not, we don't wanna be walking, panting, going on the hike, and then suddenly it's like still shot. We'd rather continue the motion of that. So if we've just got a shot, for example, of our shadow or of us walking, it's really cool as well to cut to a shot as if we are walking this way, going left to right, as if we're just kind of walking past and the movement of the camera is gonna reflect the movement of your own viewpoint as well.
including that in your video is going to really glue everything together. It's gonna to kind of be the glue within your video that's gonna go in between your nature sequences. And that is actually what tip number three is, which is nature sequences. It's almost kind of like I planned out this video. <laughs> What you're going to want to do during your hike is stop off wherever you see beautiful nature. And you want to going to capture that in not only just one shot, you want to going to try and get a sequence of that nature. So rather than stopping off and being like, oh, nice shot, nice shot, nice shot, as if you were taking photos, when you get, when you stop off at a nice place, you're going to go and create a little kind of four to five shot little exploration of that nature. You might get some almost kind of macro style shots, you might get some establishing ones, but you're gonna kind of wanna lead the audience in. And if you start doing that in between either your vlogging pieces or your, your kind of journey first person pieces, then it's gonna be a really nice mix of, this is my perspective, this is where I'm going, this is the hike, and bam, into a cinematic natural sequence, and then out again onto the next point of your journey. Okay, so right now we found a really nice bit of nature. We've got this tree, kind of dead tree just across there and like lots of like there's different kind of dappled light, small stuff growing here. So for example, if I was hiking across here and I came across this, I'd want to kind of lead the viewers in here, have a little exploration as well. So the first thing we could do is get a nice lead in establishing shot and move in like that. We're going to try another one from here. Hopefully I won't get my feet too muddy and get a shot where we're really nicely leading in. To this bit of nature here. Some really nice dappled light on the floor here. What I really love to do. If you saw my video where I'm creating epic nature sequences, that's kind of like a little, little masterclass just on this thing in specific. But for example, we can play with the dappled light here, get some shots of these little plants growing out. We're also practicing our squat, which is great for the hip flexors. Looking around, just using observation. I really like this vine climbing up this tree here, or this branch more like. Hair on my face so I can actually see. Oh, that's really nice. I love these kind of shots. When you have a kind of light, like illuminating leaves, it does something to the feels, you know? Gets me feeling. Uh, and maybe just like two, three more shots. I mean, we only really need four or five good shots in a nature sequence. So this tree over here with the light, for example, could look pretty nice. Sometimes overexposed sky can look good. Sometimes it's not so good. So it's really kind of hit and miss. But I do like the sun peeking out here. I'm just imagining some of the sound design I can do here. Add in a few bird noises and stuff. I think it would be really nice. Also with that, can get a close up of the tree branch. Cool, that looks good. And then potentially what we could do as well is get a shot as if we've kind of just been in this part of nature and then we're going back out. We always want to kind of lead the audience with us. So what we've just done is we've kind of got a shot going in. We've explored it a little bit on the ground up there with the tree and then we've got a shot going out again and that's where we would continue on our hike. Tip number four is make sure you capture the climax of your hike. This is fortunately what most people actually do. Um, is when you get to the top, the peak, whatever that is, um, maybe it's a viewpoint, maybe it's a top of a mountain, maybe it's uh, the, the best part of a picnic spot in the forest, whatever it is, when you've kind of reached your, your destination, what you're gonna do is capture that. You're gonna capture the kind of the moment that everything's been building up to. It's gonna kind of give your audience that satisfaction. It's gonna give them this kind of, this feeling of when you've just finished a, a beautiful bitter chocolate cheesecake. Um, it's gonna kind of give you that, mm, the dessert, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm really, really hungry now. All right, so right now we've reached the climax of our hike. In front of us, we've got the amazing view that we've worked so hard to achieve. So now we're gonna make sure we capture this. And this is gonna be, for example, look at the landscape tutorial that I filmed a couple of weeks back. That's gonna be a very similar thing to this. So if we've got this viewpoint here, we're gonna establish it. We're gonna lean into it, for example. 
We're gonna do a kind of sped up demonstration here. And then whatever captures our attention, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna capture. So rather than just pointing and shooting, we're gonna look, okay, I like these leaves in the foreground here. These kind of rustling, rustling fellas rustling away. So I might get a kind of slow-mo shot of that. Um, I might go down and get the waves there, maybe get try and get some of the surfers if I can. Very similar shot to the other one. I'm going to change that up. Do a spinning shot of the people in the ocean. I also might get a shot of myself if, I, uh, if I'm doing a real self-inclusion in this video. And I'm looking at the view I just got. Maybe I'm sweating. I'm sweating buckets. <sighs> looking at the view. Looking around. And it doesn't have to be like, like don't, don't pull any faces, you know? Don't try, don't, don't try and do anything in these shots, you know? Try and forget that the camera's there and actually just look at the viewpoint. And not only are you actually gonna spend time looking at it, but it's gonna look way more natural on your camera as well, in your video. So basically what I'm doing there is for the climax here, I'm basically following my landscapes tutorial. Let's forget that happened. I'm basically following my landscapes tutorial uh, I'm finding out what's interesting to me, creating another sequence at the top of my climax and potentially getting some shots of myself to finish the video. So tip number five, the final tip, is going to be to infuse your thoughts and feelings within your video. Now this doesn't necessarily mean sitting down after your hike and vlogging it out to your camera or doing a voiceover, although it could be those things, they're very good ways to do it. But more specifically, it's infusing your thoughts and feelings within your shots. So for example, you could be feeling after a hike like, I am one with the universe. Or you could be feeling like nature is within my soul. Or you could be feeling like I really need a dump. It could be anything. If you want an entire list of gear that I recommend that I also use, click the link in the description that's going to take you to the free PDF of my gear list. Uh, this video was filmed by Raul, who is a very talented videographer and wedding filmmaker. Uh, he does wedding films and also corporate videos. His links are in the description below. Uh, right now, I'm going to go to the bathroom.